what I wondered is I, I know the development of Spiral kind of came from like a chance meeting with Lionsgate at like a wedding. But as a horror fan yourself, as a Saw fan, was the idea to, you know, wanting to put your own spin on Saw something that you've thought for years? And this was a final, you know, finally an opportunity that presented itself. Yeah, it was it was weird. I mean, I, I always play this little game. I watch a dramatic movie and I go, I could have got four jokes in there <laughs> without <laughs> up the movie. I always, I always play that game. And, you know, Saw, especially Saw 2 is one of those movies. I was like, hmm. I think I could have got a couple of jokes in there without screwing up the movie. So I kind of brought that up to the head of Lionsgate at Guile series wedding. I was like, you ever think about putting some comedy in Saw? Not a lot like a scary movie, you know, not not make it silly. But, you know, the saws are so dire. And so I kind of had this idea of like, you know, almost you know, like Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte in 48 hours, but they're it's a horror movie. You know what I mean? And right. I, I think that's kind of what we got. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would definitely uh, agree. And again, you know, you have such a, a diverse career and so many people know you from for comedy. And I wondered if your approach to the, the acting process in this was similar to how you approach any dramatic role, any comedic role, because this is your first kind of like straight up horror movie. Yeah, I mean, it's you know the thing about a horror movie, and like in most movies, okay, put it this way, it it doesn't help you to actually read the script in a horror movie. I mean, and what I mean by to read the next day, you should know your lines that day. <laughs> you should know your lines. It doesn't help to know anybody else's lines because you got to be scared. You got to be wondering what the hell is going on more so than any other type of movie. So I tried to really forget that I knew what was going to happen in this movie more than anything else. Well, and, and I know you wanted to, like, keep the traps a secret and not see them until you actually got to set. I wonder what your reaction was when you saw them, if you were like, OK, this is everything that I wanted it to be. Or if you're like, eh, this might not be as fun as I wanted it. No, I, I love the traps. I love the traps. I, I wanted more traps. I wanted I wanted to return of traps. It's like <laughs> do the reverse uh, bear trap again. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to try a couple more. But uh, yeah, that's when it got real for me. You know, it's like, ah, yes, <laughs> this is different than no comedian has done this. So that, that's what made me feel good. Well, and, you know, since this is an 18 year running franchise, I know that there's talks of, you know, a, a TV series and stuff. Now that you've gotten into the world of Saw, are you like, I'm going to stick around for a while, even if it's just behind the scenes? Or was it like, you know what? I did it. I'm good. I, you know, kind of move on. Uh, you know what? We're talking. I mean, you know, hey, you want this one to do well. Right. So you don't want to go get too ahead of yourself. But. If this one does well, yeah, I could see myself doing this again. I can see. I, I mean, you, you know, I don't want to spoil the movie, but I think it, you know, it's open. Another one wouldn't be out of the question. Well, I mean, full on spoilers. I was not expecting you to be playing a young John Kramer. That that came out of left field. <laughs> that was they were these saw movies really keep you on your toes. <laughs> Uh, but as such a, a horror fan, you know, uh, is this going to be kind of like a, a new avenue you'd like to invest more in? Like, are there other you know horror movies that you're a big fan of that you're like, you know what, this was great, but it needs a little bit levity, a little bit more levity that I'd like to bring uh, to? It. I think Saw is the perfect one, honestly. You know what I mean? I don't. I think I think the Saw franchise, especially what we set up in this one. Especially, you know, Spiral. I think we I think we can get a few out of this one. Well, thanks so much, Chris. I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, super excited to see you you pursuing a, new, a different avenue. Oh, thank you. Congrats on the new film. I know it was a return to form for you a little bit. And I wondered, since this is a little bit of a reinvention, uh, when you got to set to shoot Spiral, was there a, a fight against the muscle memory of like, OK, this is how I would have shot it 
10, 15 years ago, but I need to change things up? Yeah. When I made Saw 2, um, I was 25 years old and now I'm 42. And a lot has happened between 25 and 42. I've got married. I've had kids. I see the world in a different way. And I think when I was younger, um, violence was what drove the story. It was blood. It was guts. It was you know, trying to gross the audience out. I think going into it this time, um, violence was there to serve the story. Um, also, you know, one of the other things I wanted to do was a whole different visual approach. It's got familiarity that Saw fans are going to like, but we went with the new DP and to give it a new style and a style that I think is more, I don't know, it, it's more exciting for me. It's, it's bigger. Uh, it, is, it is more dynamic. Um, so yeah, approaching the whole style was completely different. Gone are the handheld, shaky, crazy cuts every one second. Um, and now there's, you know, there's a lot of longer takes. There's a lot of steady cam and crane movements, which there wasn't in previous films. So I think that it's a little more of a growing up as a filmmaker uh, for me coming into the Saw franchise again. Well, and obviously everyone loves Saw for its traps and its story. But uh, I wonder with the development of Spiral, were there any traps that were in the the script maybe or toyed with that we were like okay no this is this is too gnarly this is going to take away uh, from the story we're trying to tell so this is funny um and i might get in trouble for saying this and i hope i don't uh there was a there was a trap that was even cut out of the movie for being too gnarly that we we actually shot um yeah i mean the, the traps are the most complicated part of the franchise at this point we've killed so many people in so many different ways. The moment we think of a trap, I'm like, Oh, this is awesome. And they're like, no, we did that in saw five. And I'm like, Oh, and I'm like, what about that? No, that was in saw eight. And I was like, there's no, so to, to be inventive and to have it fit the story. Cause it's easy to think of ways to kill people, but think of ways to kill people that is based in their character. Um, and I think that the traps go through this evolution that they start off as an idea that we know when you read the script, it's really funny. When you read the script, it doesn't say what the trap is in the first time. It'll say like insert trap here, and then we'll move on insert trap here. And then throughout the uh, pre-production process, we figure out what that trap is. So like an example in the, in the first scene of the movie, the tongue trap that was just said, um, uh, Boz trap goes here. And then we sit down and we figure out what that trap is. And so we knew that, you know, that, that, that he lied under oath and we're like, okay, lies. How do you lie? You lie with your mouth. So let's do something with the mouth. Well, we've already done the head trap, so we can't do that. Okay. Let's remove the tongue. And originally it was uh, fish hooks in the tongue. And we're like, it, it, for me, the traps have to work the way we show them to. So if a guy is on a ladder and jumps off with fish hooks, all it's going to do is tear the tongue. It's going to rip through it. It's not going to tear it out. So then we're like, how do we tear the tongue out? So then they go through this crazy process and then they go to engineers, literal engineers to figure out, would this really work? And one of my favorite things that I hope makes the DVD are the tests that's being done at the effects house and the engineering house. Um, where they actually do it. So like an example on the glass trap scene, they actually have a trap that that thing in the parking lot with real glass bottles going into it where they're shooting it against the wall. So we're seeing real glass break and shoot into a wall. So they, they, these, these traps go through a, a complicated, arduous process. And lastly, you know, if the, if Lionsgate said, Hey, Darren, we, we love you. We want you to make 10, 15 more saw movies, limitless budget, do whatever the hell you want. Or you can make one Leprechaun movie. What are you doing? Well, the Leprechaun movie. Don't ask stupid questions. It's always the Leprechaun movie. And I'm going to take this chance because I know Lionsgate's listening in that room over there. Give me the f***ing Leprechaun franchise. I mean, seriously, I've been asking for 15 years. Yeah. Live or die, Lionsgate. Either, no. either, give Darren the Leprechaun franchise. You, you, you've heard it. You've heard it, guys, right here. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not even joking you. Uh, I, I just love... You know what my favorite type of subgenre of horror is the fun horror movies, the ones that, that that were just fun and you smiled and you high-fived in the theaters. I mean, there are moments of that in Spiral that are fun, like the opening Chris Rock scene with the Forrest Gump. Um, but like the Leprechaun movie to me is the epitome of like a fun movie going experience. It's ridiculous. It's over the top. It's gory. It's, it's violent. Like give that to me. Let me, what else are you going to do with it? Well, thanks so much, Darren. I look forward Thank to you. talking to you uh, in promotion of the next Leprechaun. Hey, Max, uh, you know, between Spiral, Handmaid's Tale, um, are you OK? <laughs> I'm a very, you know what, in real life, um, I'm a very non-serious, silly person. And yet I somehow keep ending up on shows and movies that involve torture. I don't know what. 
don't know why that happened. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's to sort of teach me a lesson of some kind. Oh, all right, good. I'm glad you're living your silly real world life to, to juxtapose yeah. the heavy stuff we see you do on screen. Um, I, I wondered since, uh, uh, you know, before getting into Spiral, what kind of impact did the, the Saw franchise have on you just like as a, as a fan of horror movies? Well, I am a fan of horror movies and I, you know, I really like these films. Um, I love a good twist and I love, um, I love how they're constructed. There's like certain rules to a Saw movie that you have to take. It's almost like a James Bond movie, you know? Um, so I, I like things that have the like rules to them. And I thought the idea of bringing in like new people um, and then merging it with the old guard and Darren and Josh and Pete was like, really clever, you know, in the movie itself, when you see the final product, I think you can feel that you can feel that it's that very much a traditional saw movie. And yet um, it's a very different take and it sort of introduces a, uh, this kind of buddy cop element and a slightly lighter tone to it. Um, so I, I think it was a, you know, a, cl a clever concept that I can take no credit for. Well, and you mentioned the the buddy cop dynamics and, and the scenes between you and Chris. I mean, I, I assume that's a dream come true to do a buddy cop with, with Chris. Uh, yeah. I wondered what your kind of influences were and, and what the process was of you two kind of developing that dynamic that we see on the screen. You know what, it really, um, it kind of ended up being a little unexpected. You know, in the script, the characters are sort of at each other's throats the kind of the whole time, you know, I, they, it, as you expect from a buddy cop movie, right? They're supposed to be polar opposites. They're supposed to bicker the whole time. That's what we used to. And Chris and I just got along very well and I think felt pretty relaxed with each other from the outset. So... It, it did affect our relationship on screen pretty quickly. Um, so the dynamic in the movie changed, you know, William and Zeke get along pretty fast in the movie. They have a couple of, you know, a couple of funny exchanges, but uh, by the end of their first day together, I think they find like a rhythm and a camaraderie. And I think that's actually kind of more interesting. And I haven't seen that before. And it ends up helping where the story goes in this movie. And uh that was all kind of unplanned for. It just happened that way. Well, and there's a, a line in the movie where you say like, you know, I've been waiting to see this stuff since I was 12 when you, yeah. when you come across like a crime scene. Do you remember what your first reaction was when you finally saw these like gruesome, gory, horrible things on set? Uh, well, it kind of feels like you're going to Universal Studios like you know, tour when you're a kid. Um, but the line, you know, you just referenced that line, I've been dreaming about this since I was 12 years old. I mean, that line really was weird for me to say because it's true. Like, this film does feel like the realization of a childhood dream, like for me specifically, you know. And um, there was something kind of like emotional for me about that, you know, like it's a tough job we, we do. <laughs> um it's a, it's a hard way to make a living and to kind of be 15 years into this and, and get to work with somebody like Chris and, you know, work with Darren and Sam and all these amazing people. And um, in such a kind of dream project, I just, I felt very grateful. Well, and obviously there's, there's violence in the whole Saw series, but with Spiral and, and all the other movies, there's all, it's always about appreciation for life and kind of what you take away from those horrible, you know, intense experiences. Uh, what do you feel you personally took away from your experience filming, filming Spiral? Um, honestly, mostly it was learning from, from Chris. I think that you get getting to be in proximity to somebody that talented and that experienced and honestly that kind um, was, was, a, was a huge lesson. I'm always kind of looking for people who behave in the right way, you know, and lead well. Um, that's, you know, that's the thing I always hope to rub off on me a little bit. Uh, good manners. And um, I was surrounded by a lot of good manners on this movie. Well, uh, congrats on the new film. Look forward to you doing more horrifying stuff and uh, having fun in your real life. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hello. So nice uh, nice to meet you and chat with you here. It's uh, 
Uh, I loved your role in this movie. Um, and, and I wondered, as like a horror fan yourself, what kind of impact did the, the Saw films have on you prior to actually joining the franchise? Um, I Like you said, I'm a huge horror fan. I love scary movies. I love to be thrilled. Um, uh, the fact that there's been, I don't know how many films, like nine or something or eight. It's nine. Yeah, it's crazy to me. Um, and then to jump into this sort of new chapter, it's, it's kind of an honor. It's scary. You know, no pressure. Uh, <laughs> but it's also an honor to be a part of it and work with Darren, um, who's been a part of them, you know, for so long. And to jump in and start this new, new, you know, episode with Chris and Sam and Max, it's, it's really great. Well, and I think what I loved about your character is you were playing a character that would typically be like a Dennis Franz type of yeah. like, you, you see those tough, hard ass captains who are like big, burly guys and you yeah. totally nailed it. And, and it was so fun to watch. How did you, you find that balance between like leaning into that kind of cartoonish element of the police chief versus like keeping it grounded and real? Um, thanks. It's a great question. Um, for me, it was just about what is she trying to do? What are you, what would you have to be like if you're put into this position and you have to run this group of ornery, you know, pissed off guys and girls and get them to do a job and work as a team and knock it off. So day in and day out. So for me, it was more about what is she trying to accomplish then what's the caricature that I'm trying to get across? It was, what is she trying to do? So, um, and also I have some experience with that in a little bit of working next to law enforcement and different elements. So, you know, I, I, it's based in a lot of reality. Well, and, and I think the whole kind of Saw series is about, you know, going through grueling things and taking away a new appreciation for, for your surroundings. And, since you haven't done straight horror, straight up horror, uh, what kind of things did you take away from this experience uh, just about the genre in general? general? I love it so much. I've been dying to do horror. I've been waiting 20 years for a scary movie. I'm like, come on, let's go. Um, so I know what it's like being an audience member going to a theater. You know, you see a preview of your scary movie, you're like, oh, I'm going to theater. I have to see that in the theater. I know that experience. And I've been on the other side of that for so long. So to finally be on the other side of it and know the effect of how it's gonna play, I mean, I'm so glad we held this movie for theaters because it belongs there. And so it's sort of like a check mark. Finally did it. Good. <laughs> I, I like to picture people seeing this in theaters and then seeing you sneak in down in the corner just to watch the audience. I've already talked about it. That's already what I'm doing. I'll be in a hoodie in the back of the theater with a mask on. Thank you. So no one can tell who I am because I need to see it in a theater. I want that experience. That's, yeah, that's some good viral marketing, too. No, that's not, you know, some weirdo. No, that's the star just wearing a mask creeping you out. That's right. <laughs> I just want to hear people scream. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> well, and, you know, you've, you've now joined the, the Saw franchise. Uh, you've done Riverdale, this beloved comic book series. And do you have any other of your own personal favorite, you know, comic book, uh, Star Wars, uh, Halloween? Do you have other, you know, favorite franchises that you're now dying to be a part of? Um, I mean, all of them. You just said them. Star Wars, I grew up on. Come on. How epic is that? Um, uh, Halloween, wouldn't it be fun to redo that? I mean, there's something I, I want. I want to be a part of something that has some kind of like iconic theme music like Halloween did. Right. Like it had that iconic thing where you just. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, I love being a part of those things, those things that take on a life of their own. I mean, look at the Avengers, look at Marvel, look at, at so many that, that are, they just take on a life of their own, whether it's horror or comic book or superheroes or whatever it is. That's what was so great about being a part of Riverdale is, you know, there were characters that people knew and loved for so long, but took on sort of the second chapter of that. Um, I mean, it's, it's, as an actor, it's a dream to be a part of something like that. Well, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to chat. Uh, I, I loved your character, the new film, and uh, I look forward to seeing you creep into theaters, literally. <laughs>